Welcome to Rock Intercessors Ministries, connecting with you and your family today in prayers to rescue and revive. We're an apostolic, prophetic, deliverance and healing ministry. God has called us to pray and destroy the work of the devil in your life and in your family, to bring healing to your spirit, soul and body. Come and join our service each Sunday at Walthamstow Primary Academy, London, E17, 5DP, from 11am to 1pm. Be blessed as you join us in prayer, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God, praise God everyone. God is a good God. Today is a, a very good day, it's a wonderful day, it's a a day that the Lord has made and has bring us together to worship, to glorify, to serve uh, the living God. And today we have a topic, um, a wonderful topic, and um, which is freedom by faith. Our topic today is freedom by faith. And for us to start, we need to know what faith is all about. And we go to Hebrew chapter 11 from verse 1 to know what faith is all about. And we know the word of God says, by faith, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And the Bible said, For by it the elders obtain a good report. <laughs> faith is a substance of things hoped for. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. God has promised us a wonderful um, salvation. And we can understand that that salvation, there are many people that do not see the salvation, which is Jesus Christ. But by faith, they reach, they get the freedom that Jesus Christ came to give to them. It's like, we, we call ourselves children of God today. We say we are children of Abraham. It is by faith that we claim that. Many of us, the Gentiles, we call ourselves children of Abraham. Yes, we are. By faith, we are the children of Abraham. So, freedom by faith is projecting us to receive the freedom that God has promised us by that faith. Even by not seeing it, we know we have got it. It's like we talk about going to the kingdom of God. We talk about going to the kingdom of God. And then we said, by God's special grace, I am there. By God's special grace, we are all going to be there. It is by faith. And most of the time when we are in our dreams and in our vision, we see ourselves in the kingdom of God. The spirit of God will take us to see the kingdom of God. By faith, we are there already. So, there are many people that have received these promises of God. They didn't attend to it, but they receive it by faith. And they have the freedom by faith. And that is why I want us to discuss about freedom by faith. And we see the powerful work that our forefathers, that the children of God, that the prophets of God have walked through and believed God and have moved in a very wonderful way to receive the promise by faith, the freedom by faith, the salvation by faith, a faith in the name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. So I would like us to understand that faith is a long walk and this message will also encourage us today to understand that when you are walking by faith, there are many things that surround faith. We say faith, by faith, you are saved. By faith, we, we reach to the things that are still uh, ahead of us by faith. So when, one, when we understand faith, we will understand that faith itself is very, very important for us today. Even though it's a soft, a faith is a substance of things not seen. But faith is what carries us today. Faith is what is very, very important to us today. And that is faith 
is what is going to carry us to reach the things which we do not see. Okay, the long walk of faith will be the first, um, first point that we are going to make today. Long walk of faith. Remember the topic, freedom by faith. And then we say that faith is a substance of things not seen. And evidence of things hoped for. And for you to reach that, that is a process. And that process takes a long walk. Let us take, for instance, from, um, from the promise. From, let's, let's start from Abraham. From Abraham to the coming of Christ. From Abraham to the coming of Christ. We can see that there is a, it's a long generation. It's many generations. Like we have um, 42 generations from Abraham to the coming of Jesus Christ. We have 42 generations. And if we read Matthew chapter 1 from verse 17. Matthew chapter 1 from verse 17. And the word of God is teaching us the generation that have been and gone before the promise of Jesus Christ come to fulfillment. Matthew chapter 1 from verse 17. The Bible says, So all the generation from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David until the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. So, if you put the whole generations together, it, it is 42 generations before the promise of the Savior come to manifestation. So, you can understand that the work of faith is a long journey. Faith is not something that you're going to have now. And when God says, have faith in God. Then you think, oh, I'm having faith in God. And what, why is it everything is going a wrong way? When you have faith in God, you should wait. You should be patient with God. Imagine from Abraham, we get Abraham, we get Isaac, we get Jacob. You have Abraham, we have Isaac, we have Jacob along the way. Then Jacob becomes Israel and then we have Joseph. And from Joseph, we have Moses and we have David and we have Elijah. We have um, John the Baptist, we have Jesus Christ. All these people, they go through many temptations. There are through many temptations in the work of faith. You need patience. When God says, have faith, and when you say, I have faith in God, that what you are saying to yourself is, you, you have patience. You can endure. Faith needs patience. Faith needs endurance. If you don't have patience, if you don't have endurance, you're going to fall. Because a lot of things will come to, to tempt your faith. Okay, a lot of things to, will come to tempt your faith. And then we know what the Word of God says to us when it comes to things that will tempt our faith. The Word of God says that in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. 1 Peter chapter 4, Verse 12. And the word of God says, 1 Peter 4 12, and it says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fairy trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happening unto you. He said, Beloved, think it not strange, because it is not strange concerning the fairy trial, which is to try your faith. Okay, we believe that by faith and by grace, we are saved. But before that salvation comes, there will be a trial. And the word of God said to us, think it not strange. It's not a strange thing to happen to you. So temptation and persecution is not a strange thing when it happened to you. After all, the word of God said to us in 1 Peter chapter 1 from verse 7. He said, a proper gold has to be tested with fire. Gold go through fire. Then when a pure gold go through fire, then the beauty of it will come out. 
If a gold did not go through fire and come out success, then it's not a good gold. So as a child of God, we're going to go through that very process. Some of us sometimes, what, what draw us back and what destroy our, our Christianity is because we don't understand the word of God. That when we have a promise, that there will be trials that will follow that very promise. When we are believing God, it's not a short walk. God is a patient God. The word of God says a thousand years is like a day. And a day is like a thousand years in the sight of God. So when we are believing God, it's not a short walk. We are going to be prepared to go a long walk. Then if God make it short for us, glory be to God. But whether it is short or whether it is long, we must understand that along the way, we are going to witness and we are going to meet difficulties. We are going to meet challenges. And this is part of the process to bring us to the promised land. It is part of the process to bring us to the promised land. Let me just take, for instance, the children of Israel. They, they passed through Red Sea. They passed through Jericho Wall. They passed through River Jordan. They passed through the wilderness before they could be able to get even to the promised land. The promised land, God himself said, I have come down. I have seen the suffering of my people and I have come down to help them. God appointed Moses and said, go, save these people. But still yet, they face temptation, they face trials, they face starvation, they face hunger. So all this thing is God preparing us and God strengthening us. So in our family, in our day-to-day -day -day work in life, we must understand that when temptation comes, it is a normal thing. We shouldn't count it as a strange thing. Oh, I'm a child of God. I pray. I am holy. Why is it that I'm facing temptation? Why is it that I'm facing trials? Why is it that I'm, I'm facing these challenges? Whereas I'm praying, things should be all right. Things should be perfectly okay. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Because every gold must go through fire. And that's what the word of what one thing we must you must understand is what the Bible says in First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. If you have First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, always with you in your heart, then you will win any temptation that comes to you. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. And the Bible says, the word of God says in First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. And it says, There had no temptation. That had no temptation taking you that but such as is common to man. God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So whenever temptation is coming to us, we must have this at the back of our mind. That God is not going to allow the temptation that will be more than us to come to us. Because God is faithful. Amen? Amen. So whenever we are going through these struggles in life, whenever we are going through these challenges in life, whenever we are going through these temptations in life, we must understand that this temptation is normal. And when they come, we must know that God can never ever, God have weighed it. God have weighed the temptation and know that your strength can be able to carry it. If you cannot be able to carry this temptation, it will come to you. God will not allow it to come. Because no matter whatever comes to you, God must first of all allow it to come to you. Amen? Amen. Because God knows everything. And God understands everything. And God will, the Bible says that God will make a way out of temptation. Let us take some, um, uh, remind ourselves of some examples of um, uh, the trials, the persecutions, and the temptation that come to the children of God, even to the seed of the promise. We talk about Abraham, that is the seed of the promise. And God said to him, Abraham, leave your country, go to a country that you do not know. <coughs> and God said, I will lead you there. I will be with you there. And then God also promised Abraham, said, I'm going to make your seed to be as, as the stars. As the stars of the heavens and as sand that is in the sea. Could you imagine that? And God promised Abraham this and said, I am going to be with you. I am your God. 
I am going to lead you. But Abraham did not get it all easy. A time comes, even his wife, Sarah, could not have a child. And at the old age, then God came out for him. Look at how many years it take. 90 years, 99 years before God came to visit him and before God gave him a child. All this time, God had been trying him. God had been trying him. God had been checking his faith. God had been making sure that Abraham is, uh, uh, is ready to receive that promise. And even though when Abraham finally got the promised child, God one day came to him and said, Abraham, go and offer that promised child as a burnt offering in Genesis chapter 22 from verse 1 to 3. God said to Abraham, go and offer that only child you have. What a temptation. What a temptation. Say, go and offer only that one child you have as a burnt offering. If it is you and me today, we're going to just say, it's not God. It's, it, can, it can't be God. It can, can God give me a child, the only child that I, I have and I will not have again. And God has promised me to make my descendant to be as the stars of the air, as the stars of the heavens and as the sand of the sea. And the same God is telling me to sacrifice my son, the only one son. He said, if some of us today will say, no, 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 it's not God. This is devil speaking. But God know what he's doing. So in Genesis chapter 22 from verse 1, the Bible says, And it came to pass after this thing that God did tempt Abraham. The Bible says God did tempt Abraham. Amen. Praise God. God himself, he did tempt Abraham. So when you are passing through temptation, I tell you now, something God must allow it to come to you. Without God allowing it to come to you, it will not come to you simple so when you have you when you face temptation understand have at the back of your mind god have allowed it to come to you and have at the back of your mind that that temptation is not more than you you will always overcome it amen, amen. so the bible says that god did tempt abraham and said unto him abraham and he said behold here i am and he said and he said take now thy son thy only son isaac whom thou lovest and and get thee into the land of Mara, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee there. He said, go and offer your only son. And the, no matter, the, the, uh, no wonder why the water in Mara is not tasting nice. It, 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 it says, whoever that drink it dies. Amen. Mm -hmm. No matter, that, that is why. That is why the water in Mara, the river in Mara, is not good. Bitter. It's bitter. It's a bitter river. Okay, God said to um, Abraham, go to Mara, offer your son as a bond sacrifice to me. Wow! A big temptation. A big temptation. And Abraham obeyed God. And that is why the Bible says, Abraham obeyed God and it was, it was recorded to him as righteousness obedient to God. Amen. And again, Jacob as well, just as we know, Jacob went into Laban's house and served him for seven years for Rachel. And after serving Laban for seven years for Rachel, he got Leah. He got Leah. And he said to him, he said to Laban, what have you done to me? I served for Rachel. Why do you give me Leah? And Laban said to him, in our tradition, the elder is not going to the, the, the younger is not, is not going to get married right, before the elder. Mm. And this is a big temptation. Okay? Remember mm. now, God is a good God. Remember now, had uh, Jacob, had Jacob moved uh, um, move with anger or left with Leah, we're not going to have Benjamin. We're not going to have Joseph. Mm. Amen? Yeah. So devil always, yeah. when the devil yeah. see the good hand work of God coming in your life, they try to stop it. When they will see that you are going to, you are there almost there to grab the promise of God. Devil want to stop that promise of God. Devil want to take that promise of God by tempting you or by, you know, turning you to the left or right. That's why when you believe in God, when you are serving God, do not turn, do not go left, do not go right. Just go, follow Jesus Christ. Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of your faith. So, Jacob was tempted. And then, because he knew the God he served, 
Because he have heard about Abraham, his father. How Abraham wanted to sacrifice Isaac. And how Isaac, his father, also succeeded. And uh, uh, helped him to, to, to take the position of the firstborn. Okay? So he knew all those temptations. And then he endured for another seven years. Temptation, if it is you and me. If it is us today, we're gonna at least we're gonna cause even love. We're gonna say this happened, this has happened, the other one has happened. Why this? Why that? Why didn't he give me the, my, the loved one I had? Okay, this and that, and you start to you know you, you can even tell that person that tell Laban that it's not a child of God, that it's not this and it's not that. But in this case, Jacob obeyed and then served another seven years. Amen. Let us think about the temptation of Jesus Christ. Who is the Son of God? Jesus Christ has come to save us. He is the Son of God. He is the salvation. And the Bible says the Spirit led him to the wilderness. The Spirit led Jesus Christ to the wilderness in Matthew chapter 4, from verse 1 to 11. He said the Spirit of God led Jesus Christ to the wilderness. And Jesus Christ was tempted when he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. You can see how we are praising our brethren that have fasted for 5 days. But Jesus Christ fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And prayed. And he was hungry. He was very, very hungry. And devil come to tempt him. Praise God. So every promise that you receive, every promise of faith must come, must meet temptation along the way. So if you have not met temptation along the way in your Christianity, along in, in the service you, you, you are giving to God, that means you are compromising somewhere. You are really compromising. You are not up to the service because the service has uh, have, have to be accompanied by temptation. The calling, the faith, the promise have to face temptation, have to face challenges. So that when you, when you can be able to win that, those challenges, then you can be able to claim, then you can be able to say, oh yes, I have won, I have run the race. Oh yes, I have won it. And then you remember the challenges that you have faced and won. Our God is a good God. Mm -hmm. And if I, I, time will fail me to talk about David. When David went to fight a war and then come back, before he come back, his wife, his two wife, and his family, everybody's wife and his, his city has been burned down to ashes. And then David strengthened himself in the Lord. This is temptation that comes to a man of God. So today, all I'm saying to us is that freedom by faith. Faith, which is what holds us. Which is the pillar of our belief. Which is the pillar of why Jesus Christ came. Why Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead. Is to give us faith. And we know that without faith, it is impossible to please God. But that whoever that want to come to God must first of all believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Faith itself have to be tried. Faith, if faith itself have to be approved before then it will become faith. So the trial of faith is always there. So you must understand that faith will be tried. Amen? Amen. So whenever you are trial, whenever you are going through trials, do not think it is a strange thing. Never think it is a strange thing. And sometimes the work of faith is the work to the unknown. It is a work to the unknown. It's like you are walking. God said to Abraham, go to the country, go to the city you do not know. Oh, did God give him a map? God didn't give him a map. There's no uh, 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 GPS that said to Abraham, go to this place, go to that place. You go to this place, you, you turn right, you turn left, you turn, uh, you, 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 you go forward, you move sideways. No, that's not GPS. No GPS. So the work of faith is the work of unknown. It's an unknown journey. When you set off, you don't know where it's going to lead you. So when you believe God, you don't know what you're going to meet on the way. When you believe God, when you say, I have taken decision, I have decided to serve God, you don't know what you're going to meet on the way. So you're going to be ready, you're going to be prepared because it is the work to the unknown. Amen? It is the work to the unknown. We, we, we take example of Jacob. When, in Genesis chapter 28 from verse 10 to 16, when Jacob walked and walked and walked and walked and come to a place, 
He did not know that God was there. And Jacob was sleeping. He just, he was tired. He was exhausted. And he was sleeping. And then as he was sleeping, and then is he, he, he just take it as just one of those places. And then God opened his eyes. And then he saw the angels. He saw a ladder from heaven. And the angels going up and down, up and down that ladder. This is in Genesis chapter 28 from verse 10 to, uh, 10 to 16. The angels going up and down, up and down, up and down of that ladder. And then he woke up and God spoke to Jacob and said to him, I am with you. I am your God. And he woke up and he said, wow, as, as rough as this place is, because Jacob was using stone to put his head, to put under his head. He don't even have pillow. He don't even have a house. He don't even have a tent. He was using rock to put under his head. But God was there. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And today we, we live comfortable in our, in our lovely cushion, in our lovely bed. But still yet, we don't appreciate what God has given to us. Our forefathers, like Jacob, like Abraham, like Moses, like David, they have all walked the walk and run the rest. It is a walk of unknown. And the Bible says that when the morning comes, Jacob wake up. And then he starts to recall the vision, what he has in him. And he said, so, so God is here, but I do not know it. He said, God is here, but I do not know it. Even God was here before I came. And it's here now that I'm here, but I do not know it. That is why we pray that God will open our eyes. Amen. That is why we pray that God open our eyes. God give us vision. God give us the spirit and the gift of prophecy. You need it. I need it. We need to know what is happening in the spirit. You need the gift of prophecy. I need the gift of prophecy. We need it more. We need more of prophecy. We need more of vision. We need more of tongues. We need more of uh, interpretation of tongues. We need more. We need more of miracle. We need more gift of God. We need more of wisdom. We need more of, of uh, the uh, wisdom and understanding and knowledge. We need more of the signing spirits. We need more of faith. We need more of God. We need more. We need more miracle. We need more teaching spirits. So we should pray. We should ask for this thing. Because the Bible says, ask and you shall receive and seek and you shall find. Because you never know when, where God is going to show up. And when God show up, if you don't understand, if you don't see it, then you're going to get confused. You're going to be even more unknown. It's going to be unknown and confused. You're going to be a kind of, you are unknown and you are also confused. That is a dangerous one. Unknown and confused. You don't know which way to turn. You don't know what, what is around you. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And again, we can see this journey of unknown to, um, to this, uh, 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 um, what's his name again? Jacob, we've talked about Jacob. And then we talk about Gideon, the journey of unknown. Gideon, okay? Gideon, they, 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 this, they, all these uh, Amalekite, um, Amalekites were destroying, taking the things of Israel and everything. Gideon did not know that God had prepared him. Gideon never know. He never come to, he come from a published, uh, a published village. From the lowest, he did not know. That God had prepared him. And one day, he was <laughs> threshing. And then he was, you know, get, uh, getting things to hide away from the, uh, from the Midianites. And the Bible says that God, the angel of the Lord, come to him. And the angel of the Lord come to him and said, You man of valor. Mighty man of valor. Wow. And he said, Who is this? God, where are you? Where is all your promises? Why is all this happening to us? Why is the media not treating us this way? Why? Why God? Why is it that you are there? Are you really there, God? And the media are taking everything and impoverishing us. Are you there? The journey of unknown. Praise God. And God said to Gideon, he said, walk in the strength. Walk in the strength that you have. Walk in your strength. Walk in the strength that you have. Our God is a good God. Our God is a faithful and a just God. And this is in 1 Samuel chapter 30. Um, 
No, Gideon. Okay. We're going to read 1 Samuel chapter 30 from verse 1 to, to 6. 1 Samuel chapter 30 from verse 1 to 6. This is when um, David uh, um, lost his, um, um, his family because he went because of the temptation and because of the trial. He goes to temptation and then he also have trials. And then when he got the temptation and he got the trials, God tested his faith. God tested the faith of Gideon. God tested the faith um, of Abraham. God tested the faith of Jacob. So all these people, faith, were tested. And what about us? What about your own faith? If your own faith is tested, how do you take it? How do you accept it? How do you receive it? The reason why I'm bringing up all these names today is for us to know, like Abraham is the beloved. God loved him. David is the man after God's heart. David is the man after God's heart. Amen. Praise God. Amen. David is the man after God's heart. And look at the temptation that come to him. Jesus Christ is the son of God. And look at the temptation that come to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we should understand all this thing. That temptation come to the people that God loved. Not the people that God hates. So when temptation come to you. When trials come to you. When you are walking in the unknown. Then you know that God loves you so much. So we say Gideon. In Judges chapter 6 from verse 11 to 14. And then Jacob in Genesis chapter 28 from verse 10 to 16. And then we talk about Elijah again in the, in the work of unknown. In 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 9 to, 7 to 11. 1 Kings chapter 19 from verse 9 to 11. We know when Elijah was running away from Jezebel. Ahab and Jezebel. And then he came to a cage. And then he was resting there after God had fed him through the, um, through, the, uh, through the ravens. And he was resting. And the Bible says that God came to him and then wake him up and speak to him. And he said, what? I have been jealous of, my, of God. What happened? Say, I have been jealous of God. So what's happening? And then he says that I have been jealous of God. What is happening, God? For I have been jealous of you because they have killed all the prophets. They have killed all the prophets. All the prophets. And I am the only one. I am the only one that remains. What happened? What happened to the promises of God? What happened to the faith of God? And the word of God said to us, that God told him, I'm going to come and walk past you. I will show you who I am. Praise God. He said, I will come and show you who I am. And this is in 1 Kings chapter 19 from verse 9 to 11. He said, I will come, I will show you who I am. I will walk past you. Our God is good. So God came and then God walked past um, Elijah. Just to prove to him that he is God. Just to prove to him that he is in control of everything. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So God is in control. Whenever we are walking the walk of unknown. When we are going to the place that we do not know. When we are carrying the faith. When we are walking and um, going to the promise of God. Trying to get the promise of God. We must know that it is the work of unknown. So I want to summarize here. So that we can be able to take wonderful thing out from this message today remember the topic the topic is freedom by faith and this topic is a very very broad topic it's wonderful topic and then we have this the work of faith that we just take out from the freedom of faith the work of faith and then we understand that the work of faith is a long journey and then we can see that we have got 42 generations from Abraham to the promised Messiah, Jesus Christ. 42 generations. 
And this for two generations, they go through trials and temptations and persecutions. So it's a long walk. And sometimes this long walk is with patience and with temptation and with persecution. This long walk is with trials. And we understand as well that this long walk of faith is a walk to unknown. Sometimes you don't know when you are walking along this line, when you are walking along the way. Sometimes you don't understand where you are going. Sometimes you don't understand things that is happening around you. So all you need to do is just to be faithful and just to know that God is there with you. And again, I say to every one of us that when you are facing temptation, do not think it's a strange thing. I'm a child of God. Why should I face temptation? It's not strange. Amen? Temptation is not strange. Temptation comes to prove you. Temptation comes to make you to be strong. Temptation comes to, uh, to, to, to shepherd you, to make you ready to receive the promise. That's why temptation comes. Amen? Amen? And with this, I will say to every one of us, may God strengthen us, and may God keep us flowing, and may God give us the knowledge and understanding to know that when we are going through temptation and persecutions and trials, it's not a strange thing. And that for us to know and understand that when you have a promise of God and you are going ahead and you want to reach out to the promise of God, I can assure you, you must face temptation. And when you are facing temptation, it's not that God do not love you, but God loves you because God, uh, God loves you and he's tempting you. That's why he's tempting you. That is why you are having the problem so that you can prove that love of God yourself. So when temptation comes, God wants to, God wants to test you. And God wants you to prove that you love God as he also loves you. Amen. Amen. And I say, may God bless every one of us today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. And amen. amen. You've been watching Rock Intercessors Ministries. We believe you and your family have received God's mercy, love, healing, and miracles. Our senior pastor, Apostle Peter Anuba, would love to stay in touch with you. Please contact us for one-to-one -one prophetic, deliverance, and healing sessions. Please support us in prayers and finance to reach billions of souls whom Jesus died for. Visit our website to see how you can help, rockintercessors.com. You can also subscribe to our mailing list to be notified of upcoming events. See our details below and on screen. Visit our website, rockintercessors.com. Email us at info at rockintercessors.com. Call us on 07944 204 895. Are you outside of the UK? Text or call us for free using WhatsApp. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now remain in God's goodness and mercy and may God favour you and your family in Jesus' name. Amen.